Wasn't that wonderful that the kids could share worship with us today? So I decided to come down here with you. So if, if, the, if there's any kids out there, come on up front. Because I'm going to be talking to you. I figured the old folks, they're beyond help. What I have to say is all for you. I brought with me a bag full of rocks. And that's what we're going to be talking about because Nicholas did such a good job telling the story. I won't have to tell much of the story. Fortunately for you, I didn't bring a sling because I might be tempted to put a rock in a sling. And not, not a good idea for Pastor Terry to be twirling big rocks around and uh, with the prospect that one of them might be let go. So again, thank you guys for, uh, for participating. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And, and thank you all for coming to uh, be a part of our, our children's worship. Hopefully, this is not going to be just once in a while, but we're going to have more and more and more of you guys leading in worship and, and helping us all to re, re, uh, be reminded of, of what worship is all about. It's about just coming before God and having hearts full of joy and enjoying each other's company, right? So, all right, so we're going to talk about rocks. There's a text in Isaiah 41.10, and this is what it says. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. When Nicholas asked you how many of you have would be able to fight a lion or a giant, the Bible says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. God wants us to be, have courage in the face of anything. So if you want to, uh, later on today, you can go home and have your, your mom or dad read this to you, or if you can read, you can read it yourself. It's in 1 Samuel 17. That's where you find the story of David and Goliath. And there's so many details in there. There's so many great parts of the story. So you know, uh, Nicholas talked to you about how David came to the camp of the, the army of Israel. And the army of Israel was on one side of the valley, valley and the, the army of the, the Philistines was on the other side. And this guy, Goliath, he was a bully. Have you guys ever had to deal with a bully? Yeah, some of you have. He was a bully. Every day for a long time, he would come out and he would say horrible things about the Israelites. But more than that, he would say horrible things about their God. You stupid Israelite soldiers. Not one of you has the strength or courage to come and meet me out here. And not only that, your God is so weak. That's why we're, we're beating you. We're going to win. We have a huge army. <laughs> so don't listen to that giant bully talk, okay? Uh, so, so then David comes because his dad says, David, I want you to go and take some food for your brothers. They're all in the army. I want you to go and I want you to find out what's going on. So David probably was this little guy. He wasn't that old. He's maybe 13, 14. I don't know how old he was. But he wasn't very old and he wasn't very big. And so he goes to take the food, and he hears all this talk. Now David, as young as he was, believed in God's power. How many of you believe in God's power? Do you believe that God can watch over you? Do you believe that God can help you accomplish things that other people think you can't? Uh, do you believe that God can protect you even if your face is on Facebook? <laughs> Amen. Better yet to not put your face on Facebook, though. So, so David came and he heard this talk and it offended him. Do you ever get offended when people say negative things about God or they use the name of Jesus in vain? Does that ever bother you? We live in a day and an age when that happens all the time. People say they use God's name, but not because they believe in God, but just use it as a swear word or a curse word. That offends me. That bothers me. David, when he heard this giant bully saying stuff against his God, it offended him. It didn't bother him so much about the Israelites. I mean, he didn't like it that, that his, his nation wouldn't, wouldn't even venture out to try to deal with his bully. 
But when he started talking about his God, David just had this thing inside. It's like, oh, no, he didn't say that. So then he started asking around, so what about this guy? What's going to happen? And so the soldiers around said, uh, well, the king says, whoever goes out to meet the giant, if he wins, uh, if he wins, he's going to be able to marry his oldest daughter and he's going to heap all kinds of riches and glory and honor on him. And, uh, uh, and if he doesn't win, well, it won't matter because he'll be dead. So, Then David's oldest brother. How many of you have an oldest brother? <laughs> now, I know your oldest brothers don't, are not like this, but David's oldest brother didn't like it that David was there. And he said, I know why you're here. You're just a, you're, you just, you just want to brag about being here. You just want to, you just want to show off. Anybody here ever been tempted to show off? Sometimes I see somebody grab a mic, we're like, ah, you know. but that's okay. You know, you're learning. It's when adults do that. Ah. Or in other ways. And his brother said, you just, you're just a show-off, and you have an evil little heart. Why don't you go home and take care of those sheep that our Father has you taken care of? And the Bible says, actually the story says, David turned away from his brother. He just didn't listen to him. How many of you, uh, there are times when you don't listen to your older brother or sister? <laughs> it's just like, turn away from him. <laughs> uh, Daniel back there said he doesn't, so... So uh, he turned away, and then, he, and then he went to the king, and the king, uh, the king heard about him and heard how courageous he was. And the, I, I don't understand Saul. Saul was this big, tall guy, and he's talking to a little, you know, early teenager, little kid, and he's, say, and he's saying, yeah, if you go out, I'll do this for you. How about you, Saul? Why didn't you go out? But that's not the way the story went. So he said, okay, if you go, we'll support you. Here's my shield, here's my armor, here's my spear. And David tried it on, and it didn't fit. He took it off. He said, I can't work with this. And then you know the rest of the story. So like I said, it's a good idea to read through it and pay attention to all the details. Okay, you can do that later. So I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and then we're going to talk about some rocks. Uh, first of all, what, what, when David came, and he's going to go out against the giant, what did he not have when he went against the giant? What did he not have? Crew? He didn't have a lot of strength. He wasn't, well, he was pretty strong for his age, but not against a nine foot. Do you know that, that Goliath was over nine feet tall? That's, that's pretty tall. It's way up there. That was right. What else did he not have right here? Confidence? Uh, he kind of did have confidence. He had confidence in God. He didn't have self-confidence. He wasn't a big bragger like Goliath, right? And, and what else did he have? You had your hand up. What do you think he lacked? Anybody else? Can you think of anything he didn't have? He, had, he didn't have rocks at first, but he got some, didn't he? David didn't have a spear and he didn't have a shield because he left those back, back with Saul. He said, I can't use those. He didn't have the support of his family. His brothers thought he was crazy and they were, they were embarrassed by him. Uh, he didn't have much age. He was just a youngster. And he didn't have the confidence of the king. The king really didn't believe. The king thought it was going to be all over in a few minutes, and then they go back to Goliath and all that. Okay, now here's the other question. What did David have when he went up against the giant? What did he have? Right back here. What's that? He had faith in God. That's right. Absolutely had faith. What else did he have? He had a sling. It wasn't a slingshot. It was, it was a little leather pouch that has leather straps on it, and you put a stone in it, and when you get that stone going around, it can be just a little stone, but it goes so fast that whenever it hits whatever it hits, it can do some real damage. He had a sling. That's right, crew. What else? Anybody else? 
What did he have? He had stones. He got some stones. He picked up five little stones, smooth stones, the Bible says, as he walked along. All right, crew, no one else has their hand up. What else? He had confidence in God. He had faith that God was with him. He had, well, he had food because he brought food to his brothers. He had, he had a heart for his country. He loved his country. He couldn't stand to see Israel embarrassed in front of this big bully giant. He was concerned about his brothers. Even though his brothers were embarrassed for him, he still cared about them. He had experience with, Nicholas pointed this out, he had fought what kind of a creature? Fought a lion? What else? A bear? He had experience with wild animals. He's about to fight the giant, that's right. He had, this is something you guys, a lot of you have that us old folks don't have. He had good eyesight. <laughs> yeah. I have to make my, my notes in big print so I can see it, you know. And most of all, David not only had faith in God, but David had a heart for God. He loved God. He the Bible says he, had, he, he was a man after God's own heart. So that's what he had. All right. In, in the series that we're doing right now, it's called The Only Thing You Have. And really the only thing David had was stones and a sling and then all of these things we talked about. And most of the soldiers in his, in his nation, they didn't believe any of that was going to do a bit of good against this nine foot plus giant with a huge spear that had a it had a head on it that weighed 15 pounds. Just the head of the spear weighed 15 pounds. His armor weighed, I think, about 150 pounds. I mean, David had none of that. So, here's what, we, here's what I want you to think about with the giant. The giant Goliath came and he told all kinds of lies. And we have giants in our lives that tell us lies as well. And whenever a giant bully comes to us, whether it's a real person or whether it's uh, maybe it's a group of people or maybe it's, maybe it's a church or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a politician or whatever, uh, they, they bring these lies that threaten us and it makes us afraid. So we're going to talk about five lives and how the five stones of David met each one of those lies. The first lying threat was this. It's never been done before. Never been done before. No one has ever defeated Goliath before. He's undefeated champion, heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> David said, I don't care. I got God on my side. And so David, one of the stones he picked up was the stone of in fact, I wonder if somebody would like to volunteer and come up here and read for me what the stone says. Who would like to do that? Anybody? I have the stone right here. Come on up here. Can you read? If you can't, I'll tell you what it says. It's just one word. It's just one word. What does that say? New. New. Stone new. And then on the back, there's a text. You know what that text is? Mm. Jeremiah. Jeremiah's 33rd. 33, 3. All right. Would you like this stone? Okay, you can have that. Don't throw it at anybody, please. And here's what Jeremiah 33, 3 says. Let's read it together. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, what? Which you do not know. New things. God brings new things. God has new ways of approaching God-given ideas that fearful people can't even imagine. You guys, you young people here today, God's putting ideas in your head. And sometimes we as adults, or maybe your friends, they go, that is stupid. Or we won't, adults don't usually say that, but they go, oh, I know, honey, I know, but you're young. Sometimes the ideas that come into your minds are, are new things that God is bringing there. Other people can't understand it because they haven't seen what you've seen. It's never be, been done before. That's not a reason to hold back. David, it didn't, didn't uh, cause David to hold back in any way, did it? 
Sometimes when people say it's never been done before, that's the very reason why you want to move forward. You go forward, don't run back. And David ran forward. What if Columbus had listened to people say, it's never been done before. The earth is flat. What if the Wright brothers had listened to that? Do you know who the Wright brothers were? Anybody here know who the Wright brothers were? See, we've got to teach history in our schools. This is ridiculous. Come on. Who are the Wright brothers? They're the first ones to fly, right? The Wright brothers. What if they say, nobody's ever flown before? Well, we wouldn't even have airplanes today, would we? What if Mother Teresa had listened to that? It's never been done before. You can't go to India and take care of all those horribly sick people that are dying in the streets. But she did. What if uh, Neil Armstrong, do you know who Neil Armstrong was? Who was he? Astronaut and he's the first guy on the moon. What if he had listened to that? What if Jesus had listened to it? It's never been done before. Human beings can't be changed. When God gives you a dream and you hear this giant lie, it's never been done, then you want to throw the stone that I just gave away but don't throw the stone. Throw the stone of truth, Jeremiah 33, 3, and knock down that giant. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Then there's a second stone. It's a, living, a lying threat. And this stone is... We already did that and it didn't work. You ever heard that one? We tried that and it didn't work. Churches are notorious for that. Like, we, we can't do that. We tried that and it didn't work. Well, guess what? There's another stone. It's kind of one of the stones that David might have picked up. Would you like to come up and tell me what this word is? Here, let me get the microphone. Redo. 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 Very good. Here. How about the text? Come. What is the text? Luke 5, verse 4 through 5. All right. Would you like this stone? Okay, you can have that. Don't throw it at anybody, please. So let, let me read this one, Luke 5, 4 and 5. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let, let down your nets to catch some fish. fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night, didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. We already tried that, Lord, and it didn't work. And Jesus said, well, Okay, you tried it, but we're going to do a redo, and now you're going to do it. This time, you're going to do it the way I tell you to do it. See, before you were doing it in shallow water, now go out into the deep water, do what I tell you, and it'll work. <laughs> it'll work. How many times have I heard that? We already tried helping the poor people in our community, and it didn't work. They just took advantage of us. Or we've, we already tried inviting our friends to church, and they didn't come. Well, it's time we invite some more. I invited the, Fiji, the Fijians yesterday because we had this church was full of almost 300 folks from Fiji and their friends and family because we had a big funeral here. And I invited them to come to church today. Some of them came. And then tonight, we're going to have a Vespers. They're going to come and do a Vespers. And they have beautiful music, wonderful singing, and you all are invited to come too. Sometimes you just have to invite other people. If your friends don't, Want to come to church? Invite your enemies. I don't care. Just get them here. We need to fill this church up. Is that right? A few of you say amen. Next week, the ones who weren't here are going to hear it from me. When our kids are doing worship on the Sabbath, the day we come together to worship God, this place ought to be packed out with every member and anybody they can bring. Amen? All right. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but next week, uh, the congregation's going to hear it. So, All right. We already tried losing weight. It doesn't work. Well, guess what? It does. I found out after I used that excuse for a couple years, it does work because you eat a little healthier food, get a little more exercise, move from one house to another, you're going to lose weight. So when you hear that, then throw the stone of redo at that lying giant. There's a third stone. A third stone that meets the lying threat of the giant Satan. And this is what it is. You are too small. 
You are too weak. You are too poor. You're too inexperienced or you're too sinful. You can fill in your own blank there. You're too little. You're too weak. You can't do this. That's what they told David, right? He's too little. Can little people do stuff? You guys can do, you just did stuff. Your singing was awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, Lucy and, uh, and, and Jeanette and whoever else helped them, you know, teach us how to raise our voices in worship and praise. So, so here's a third stone. Who wants to do that? We had, a, we had a guy and a guy. Is there a girl that would like to? Come on up here. Sorry, guys. We have to include the ladies. Okay, so what is that word? What is that word? Weak. Weak. That's right. And what's the scripture? Second? Second Cor- Corinthians. Second Corinthians 12, 9. That's right. Would you like this one? That's a little rock because it, it shows weak. But guess what God says about being weak? His answer was to Paul. Paul prayed and said, God, take away my weakness. And God answered him and said this, My grace is all you need. For my power is what? Greatest when you are weak. That's the stone of weakness when the devil says you're too little, you're too sinful, you're too whatever. You just bring out that scripture and throw it. Like, forget you. God says, when I'm weak, he is strong, right? I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. Maybe you think, or somebody else thinks, that you guys are too young. That is a nice word, hogwash. Have you ever heard of a girl named Alex Scott? Probably you don't recall her name. Have you ever heard of uh, Alex's lemonade stand? Alexandra Scott was born in uh, Connecticut in 1996, and she was diagnosed with neuroblastoma. It's a type of childhood cancer. She was diagnosed with this before she turned one year old. And in 2000, in the year 2000, just before she was four years old, she decided she was going to do something to help other kids who had this brain disease. And she started a lemonade stand. She's, She's like four years old, starting a lemonade stand? She, what can she do? She's only four years old. She informed her mother she wanted to start a lemonade stand to raise money for doctors to help other kids. Her first lemonade stand raised $2,000. I'd like to raise $2,000 doing anything. You know? And she continued her lemonade stand. They created a foundation on her behalf. She continued to do it, ultimately raising over $1 million toward cancer research. Unfortunately, uh, Alex died when she was eight years old in August of 2004. But today, every year, as many as 10,000 volunteers uh, at more than 2,000 Alex's lemonade stands around the nation make a difference for kids with cancer. That was a little girl four years old who did that. And she wasn't any smarter or or stronger or better than you guys. God is talking to you guys. And I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. Have you ever heard of Ryan? You haven't heard of him. I never heard of him. Hreljak. Hreljak. I can't pronounce his last name. Six-year-old Ryan was shocked to learn that children in Africa had to walk many miles every day to fetch water. How many of you have to take a bucket and walk three miles to get water and bring it back to your mom every day? How do you get water in your house? How do you get water? How do you take a bath? You just turn the faucet on, right? Water comes out. Do you know that most of the kids in the world have to go and help their parents carry water? And so he was so disturbed by this that he, uh, uh, through doing household chores and, and through public speaking, He built his first well when he was seven years old. He funded a first well in northern Uganda for a village that had no well and and people were were desperate for clean water. And so he decided to start what was called Ryan's Well Foundation. And it's completed, as of 2011, it had completed 667 projects in 16 countries. 
bringing clean water and sanitation to more than 714,000 people. I, I just can't imagine the potential that's here in this group of kids. And we think that the thing they can do is stand up and put a mic in front of their face. Oh, you start praying for our kids, you start letting them go, and you see what God can do through our children. It's going to blow you out of the water. Whenever you hear that voice in your head or in your ear, you can't do it because you're too small, you're too young, you're too weak, you're too sinful, you're too this, you're too that. Just take that stone I gave away that says weak on it with that text on it and don't throw the stone, but throw the verse at the devil and his lies. The fourth stone of truth. This is a big one. Got to have a big person. I was going to say, Mary Cruz, you want to come up get this one? <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, one more girl. Come on, we've had two guys and two girls. All right, now tell me, what does this say on it? Um, divine. 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 Okay. And can you read what the text is on the back? Psalms 44, um, verses 7, seven and 8. Seven. All right. Would you like this one? It's not too heavy for you? Okay, you can keep that. Don't throw it at anybody, though. Just let it remind you of, of the text. So, the, stone of, the fourth stone of truth that was in David's pack, perhaps, you might say, is this. It's the, the, the stone of divine. It's what God is doing is of divine origin. Psalm 44, 7 and 8 says, You saved us from our hateful enemies and you put them to shame we boast about you, our God, and we are always grateful. When you're following God's dream, when you're following God's calling, then it's all about God's power and strength. Not about yours, not about how smart you are. It's about how great God is, right? We brag a lot. I love to brag here at North Hills, but not about myself. I love to brag about God. I love to brag about the grace and the mercy and the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because He's the greatest. He's the strongest. He's the tallest. He's the most powerful. You see, David, David's brother said, you just want to get all the glory for yourself. No, David didn't. He wanted the glory for his God. So, when you hear this one, just use that verse Psalm 44, 7 and 8, it says, We boast about you, our God, and we are always grateful. Use that. Say, no, it's not about me, it's about God. Then the fifth stone, the last stone. All right, this guy, he's, he, his arm's about ready to drop off. He's been raising it so much. Okay, what does this one say? Success. Success. And what's the scripture? Proverbs. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Proverbs 16, 3. Would you like that one? And you please don't throw that at anybody either. All right. Proverbs 16, 3. The lying threat is this. You will fail no matter what, no matter what you say, no matter how much you want to worship God, no matter how much you think you have a dream, you're just going to flat out fail. It's not going to work. Someone might tell you other people succeed, but not you. You're going to fail. Maybe those other kids succeeded in doing great things. Maybe Alex's lemonade stand was a great thing, but, you, but you're going to fail. How can you succeed? Well, here's how. Here's the verse with the stone of success. And this is what it says in Proverbs 16.3. Let's read it together. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will what? Succeed. Nothing succeeds like success. <laughs> it's the stone of success. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. That's exactly what David did. He took all those little rocks, put them in his, his pouch, had his sling ready, and he just went running pell-mell towards the giant, but he committed it all into God's hands. And God gave him success. When you hear that negative voice, it doesn't matter if it comes from your friends or your family. If God is inspiring you and leading you, then the voice that you hear 
behind those other voices is the voice of Satan. He's lying to you when he tells you it won't succeed. Instead, throw this Bible verse stone of God's success at him and knock that giant lie down. You guys ever sing the song, Only a Boy Named David? Only a boy named David, only a little sling. Remember that one? Or you don't sing that anymore. Only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. You know? No? Only a boy named David, only a rippling brook. The Bible says that he picked up five stones from the brook as he went across the brook. Only a boy named David, and five, one, two, three, four, five little stones he took. And one little stone, if you know it, sing with me, come on. And one little stone went in the sling, and the sling went round and round. And one little stone went in the sling. Let's do some motions. Come on, kids, stand up. The adults are too embarrassed to do it. Just stand up. And one little, come on, guys. Went in. I'm, I'm 64 years old, and I'm doing it, so big deal. One little stone went in the sling, and the sling went round and round and round and round and round and faster, round and round and round. Oh, I need some icy hot. And one little stone went it up in the air, and what happened? And the giant came tumbling down. Now, when you were in kindergarten, you all used to just fall on the ground, but you can sit there. How many stones did David pick up? Five. How many stones did he throw at the giant? One. He only needed one. It doesn't matter if it's, it, which stone it is, if it's a stone of weak or if it's a stone of divine, divine origin, if it's a stone of, uh, what were some of the others? Success. Thank you. Appreciate that. If it's a stone of, of redo or the stone of new, it doesn't matter. He just needed one to defeat the giant. So here's a question. We're about finished here. Here's a question. Two questions. What giant are you facing today? This is a question for the adults as well. What giant are you facing today? Is somebody mistreating you? And you think, I'll never be able to get past this? Is there a dream you have inside that just seems to be so unreal that you believe God has given you that you think it's never going to happen? And the giant is taunting you. Maybe you think, I've done too many bad things. That's not you kids, it's all the rest of us out here. In my life, I've done too many bad things and there's no way that God can accept me. There's no way God's going to work for me. Is that one of the things, that, that one of the giants that's, that you're facing? And kind of along the same lines, what lying taunts keep you from engaging in the battle? What are the lies that you are believing that this, this bully, Satan, is giving to you that just keep you from engaging, that keep you from moving forward? God's given you a passion. He's given you a fire. He's given you, he's given you instruction as to a course that you should take, something you ought to do or something you ought to resist. It doesn't matter. What are the lies that you are believing that keep you from doing what God is calling you to do? Five stones, five verses. It's only five, and there are thousands in the Bible like them. Maybe you think your sling and stones are nothing against the firepower and the strength of the enemy. But these stones are the truth of God's Word. God's Word is powerful, isn't it? God's Word is, is living, the Bible says. God's Word is like, like a sword, a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. David didn't need the armor of Saul. He had the power of God's Word. Do you think it was the stone that killed the giant? Well, I guess you could say it was, but it was all the stuff behind the stone. David believed in God. David had a heart for God. David cared about his country. Well, we could say we care about our church and the mission God has given us. David, David believed that God could help him even though he was just a little guy. God is doing something new in this world. And we might think this is just a great children's story. No, it's not. 
It's God's Word to each one of us. God today, right now, is doing something brand new that we need as Christians to to follow along with, that we need to open up to. He's opening up hearts. He's calling people. And we get so comfortable in our our Christianity or in our lives, we just just try to manage and keep from having anything disturbed too much because we're going to go over the edge. And God is saying, look, i got a whole new thing for you. And God is is going to redo something in your life. Maybe you you look at your life and say, there's no way that I could overcome this. I've done it, and I've tried it, and I've tried it, and I've tried it, it failed. And God is saying, yeah, but you haven't tried it my way. God is going to redo something in your life if you believe Him. God is going to use what is weak to show His mighty strength. We're just a little church here. You think God can use this church to bring glory to the name of Jesus? You think God can use this, con- this little congregation to touch the hearts and the lives of people who are desperate to know who He is and to know His grace and to know the freedom of what it means to be connected with Jesus Christ? Do you think God can do that? Yes, He can. <laughs> God is, what God is doing is of divine origin. It has nothing to do with how hard we work or how many words we say or how many great songs we sing. It's all about what He's doing, not about what we're doing. What God does, what God does is full of success. Full of success. You know why? Because He does it. But you know the greatest thing? He does it with us. He does it with you, you kids here. He does it with the adults here. He works with us. God isn't a lone ranger God. He's a God. He's a family God. He's our Father. The sling you have is faith in the power of God and prayer that God will help His Word find its mark. You willing to use these stones, these Scripture stones? Now again, kids, the stones I gave you are only, they're just to go, you know, it's paperweight. (laughs) But the Scriptures, oh, you can throw those anytime you want. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, I thank you so much that you delight in using what is weak to show your strength. That you delight in bringing what is new to to oppose the idea that it's never been done before. That you delight, Lord, in, in showing us that you're behind the great things that work for people's lives and lift them up. I thank you, God, that you have brought us here today to participate with our children in worship and to listen to them lift their voices up in songs and in prayers, to to lead us. And so, Father, I want to pray as we close here that you will be with each one of our kids, that you would put your special protection over them, Lord. There's so many dangers in this world but you're the great God who loves and who protects and who guides and keeps. These are your children even more than they are ours. And so I pray that your overshadowing love of of protection and grace will be on them. And be especially with their, their parents and their teachers and their leaders. That they will have the heart that you have for these kids. And use them, God, to do great and mighty things through this church here in North Hills, but also all over the world, all over the world, to bring other people to a knowledge of your saving grace, of your great mercy, your tender mercy, and of the power that you have for each human being who puts their their trust in you. And we thank you and we pray this all in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you, guys. You were wonderful. Wonderful. And the adults weren't too bad either.